Hi folks, this is another do-it-yourself home repair video. And I have an HP 3-in-1 printer, HP 7280C, and uh, for about, I don't know, a month and a half now, it's been acting strange. It keeps getting error messages on the screen that are they're just a bunch of letters and numbers. They don't really mean anything to me. I looked a few of them up on the web and on the HP site, and there's not really much uh, useful information on there about what they are, but anyway, the display shows things like B72853652. And um, so I did a little digging on, on the web, and I found a website that I will reference in my comments for this video, or my description for the video. And uh, it uh, describes swollen capacitors as being a chronic problem for these devices. Uh, I've, I've seen a lot of other devices that have the same thing. Electrolytic capacitors swell over time if they're defective or they're poor quality. And uh, or underrated for the application, and uh, they swell and they lose capacitance, and then the, th the circuitry doesn't work properly. So this video talks about how to uh, actually get to the uh, get to the circuit board and do the repair. You can see my printer's lying on its side right now on this desk, and I actually have the it's spring loaded, so the lid, the scanner part is up there, and you know the spring is just keeping it open, and obviously the ink cartridges are there, and the paper feed is here, so it's on its side. So. Uh, on mine, I've got this card reader here, and right behind that is where the circuit board is, and it took me a little bit to figure out how to get into it. Um, now that I know it's not that complex, but it seemed to stump me for a while. So right at this corner, there's a, uh, a screw right there that you have to take out, and uh, obviously this cover is just resting here. It's not installed right now, but this cover, when installed, would be down at this level. The screw goes through there and into this, into a hole right there. And then there's another uh, screw in the back that probably my lighting is a pits, but it's to the to the right of the uh, Ethernet connector. So hopefully you can see that. So you pull that screw out, and then you have on the bottom of the machine you have this tab to contend with right here, and this tab to contend with right here, and this one right here. So you free those tabs up, and this cover comes off. I should point out that these screws are not Phillips screws. So star or cross screws for anybody who doesn't know the term Phillips, they're Torx, which is uh, you know they've got how many points are there? Six points I guess, but they're uh, they're not an Allen key or a hex key. They are Torx, and uh, so you need to get a special uh, special socket for those or special bit for those. Uh, you know you can try with a Phillips bit, but you're probably going to round them off and wish you hadn't. So. You're best off to get the uh, the right bit from the source or wherever you get your electronic stuff. So uh, <clears throat> so now you're looking at the circuit board, and the circuit board is attached uh, by four Torx bolts or screws. And uh, there's one here, here, there, behind that ribbon cable. So you have to kind of be careful you don't push the ribbon cable out of the way when you take that screw off, and this one. Um, so when you take those four screws off, then the circuit board is just floppy. Uh, it's held on by the ribbon cables and the power cable. Now, you can go through the effort of uh, taking all those ribbon cables out if you want, but uh, you risk, there's, gee, there's one, two, three, four, five, five ribbon cables I can see, maybe more, and like four connectors on it. Just a lot of stuff to unhook. Um, I found I did not need to do that at all because if I'm careful, I can just swivel the whole board up like this and it will kind of be nice if there was a second person, but like all my do-it-yourself projects, I'm always on my own, poor me. Anyway, um, so now you, you're looking at the actual components of the board, and uh, the capacitor that had failed on mine was a 680 microfarad, 6.3 volt rated, 105 degrees Celsius rated, capacitor, and it might be difficult to see in this video, but the top of that capacitor is just slightly bulged. If you go to the uh, website that I'm referencing in my uh, description of this video, there's a picture there of some guy who's got, uh, you know, significantly, mm, capacitor that's significantly more uh, more bulged and failed. So, anyway, but you're going to take my word for it. It's a little bit bulged there, and uh, I'm guessing if I had just waited and left this thing powered on long enough, that capacitor was swollen up and been a mushroom on the top. So that's that guy. And he was located right here. It was... Oh, sorry, but that focus. It was capacitor uh, 
C614. It's this black one. So what you're seeing there, the black one, that's the new one that I put in. So <clears throat> here's the uh, leads of the uh, the new one that I put in. I haven't snipped them off yet. And there's a proper way to uh, to change these capacitors. If you're uh, if you've never done soldering before, this might be a bit tricky for you, and you might want to find some electronics nerd friend of yours to do it because uh, these these little circuit traces here um, they're pretty fine. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry about the sneeze. I guess see, that's uh, that just is proof that I don't edit my videos. Anyway, these traces. Boy, sorry about that again. These traces are very, very fine, and if you slip with the soldering iron and touch them, uh, you're going to cook them, and like they're as fine as a as a human hair, maybe smaller. So you got to really be careful that you don't do something stupid and go at it with a hundred watt soldering iron. In fact, the lowest wattage soldering iron is the best one for this kind of a job. Uh, so anyway, this is like a cheap uh, ten dollar one. It's forty five watts, which is more than enough for this job. Uh, do not use one of those great big massive 100 watt or 150 watt soldering irons like don't even go near I, I've done this before and I wouldn't even think to use one again again one of those on this project so anyway first things first is there's your soldering tip it's a copper tip um, they corrode and uh, get oxidization on them and stuff if you have sandpaper or a grinding wheel grind it that grind the corrosion off and get it right down to a fine point that is really important for this fine work now I'm not going to do it here because I don't I don't have two hands to hold the camera and do the soldering but I'll use the soldering iron to, to show you so First things first, got to get the old one out. Well, some people would just put the soldering iron on the, the lead that's sticking up, the millimeter that sticks up, liquefy it, and kind of pull on the bottom of the capacitor. And that doesn't really work very well because you have two leads and you can't get them both liquefied at the same time. So the best way to do it is to take this stuff, which is called soldering uh, wick or braid. It's another term. It's just copper stuff that's all braided really well. And I actually put a bit of... Uh, bit of acid on it or flux or I forget what this stuff is but it, it this is this, I think it's acid oh no liquid flux it's uh, what it does is it allows whatever metal this goes on uh, to more easily the solder will more easily stick to it so you want the solder to stick into this braid and that's how you're going to get the old one out so you put say we were doing this guy right here you put the wick on top of it and hold your soldering iron right on top of that on the right right spot and uh, and hold it there uh, long enough for the solder to liquefy and get absorbed into this braid, but not long enough to superheat the board. So, it's a bit, uh, you got to do a little practice there to get it right. So anyway, you do that on both of the leads. Now, what I'm noticing on this uh, this board, and probably most new circuit boards, even for the last 20 years probably, it's double layered, which means it has copper traces on both sides. And by looking at it, it's not really easy to tell which is the side that needs to have the electrical contact. Sometimes it's both sides, sometimes it's only one. Uh, for these capacitors, I, I, I forgot to check, it's easy to tell once the capacitor is removed. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing it's the, the side that has the components on it, not the side that has the solder on it. Uh, so I'm guessing it's not, not the side we're looking at that actually is important to have the, uh, the electrical connection. It's probably the back side where the components stick out. But anyway, uh, so now you've got the solder out, you're going to remove the old one, look down the holes that you made and made sure, make sure that the the uh, the old solder is wicked out of there as much as you can because if it's not it's going to be hard to insert the new one in and so you uh, you can use the braid again on just the bare hole and clean that up but do not hold the soldering iron on there very long because these are fine traces and they'll melt and then you're going to just this will be just junk if you do that it's not worth trying to fix if you damage the traces so anyway uh, insert the new capacitor. Now there's something you need to know about electrolytic capacitors which are this kind that are like a can shape and they have a positive and a negative polarity. If you reverse the polarity in certain situations they will blow up. Now it's not like a grenade going off but they'll, they'll pop and damage almost immediately so you want to make sure you have it right. Uh, pay attention to the way the old one came out and uh, they all have, all electrolytic capacitors have a band on them and the band whether it's marked or not is always the negative terminal and then the other terminal that's not marked is the positive terminal. And you can see on this circuit board, actually, let me see if I can put the light there. No, I'm too close. Shoot. The camera's not very good. Anyway, somebody wants to buy me a new camera, I'll make better videos. Um, if you look at the circuit board, uh, you'll be able to see... If I can get the focus right. Oh, shoot. This isn't very good. 
Anyway, if you look at the circuit board, you'll be able to see a plus sign stamped or printed right on the circuit board. That indicates the positive lead of the capacitor. And then uh, you'll see a white um, kind of a half moon underneath the capacitor. That indicates the negative lead of the capacitor. Don't get them in backwards or you're, uh, you'll, be, you'll be wishing you paid more attention to this part. So anyway, you, get, you insert the new capacitor in, insert it all the way till it bottoms out on the board and the leads stick way up. And then you're going to gently uh, put the soldering iron between, well first I like to heat the lead of the component I just put in. Not tremendously, but like I give it a good two seconds, two and a half seconds till that liquefies. Uh, any solder that's on my, like I can dab that with solder. And then I slide the uh, soldering iron down and touch the board and heat up the trace and hopefully solder just flows to the trace and where uh, the lead goes through the circuit board your hope also is that solder flows through to the other side of the circuit board and makes contact with the uh, with the trace on the opposite side of the circuit board so it's all um, you want to do this fairly quick I would say if you're holding the soldering iron on there for any more than five seconds you're uh, you're at risk of damaging something um, it's oh it's you know ideally you do it all in one shot but I have, uh, from time to time, had to go back over the same soldering spot and just kind of add a bit more solder to it or, or kind of correct a messy job uh, of, of a particular soldering lead. So anyway, you can, uh, you can give that a try. Now once it's soldered on, I, uh, I stopped. I left the lead sticking out. I plugged the printer back in and uh, tried to verify if the problem was fixed. And what I noticed was it kept saying the door was open or the ink, uh, you know, the lid that protects the ink cartridges. It said that was open. And what I noticed here is on the cover there's this, this point and it goes through a hole in the case and pushes down in this metal thing. And this actually is not a switch at all. What it does is it, uh, this piece of metal right here blocks light that passes through this sensor. So basically if I had it plugged in right now, uh, the, the circuit board will think the door is open. But, if, but what I did was I stuck a screwdriver right in there just to block the light, not to pry on anything or unscrew anything. But you could stick a piece of paper in there if you wanted. Probably a better idea, actually, because it doesn't conduct electricity. And now uh, the printer will think that the, uh, the door is shut and it will boot up properly. And then what I noticed as soon as I did that, um, the printer went through its, um, you know, its boot up sequence and ink testing and all that stuff and the uh, error message was gone away so I knew that uh, that capacitor was the reason why I was having this trouble now while I'm in here I'm going to replace the other three capacitors that are right in a row there uh, I bought them already and uh, I'm going to replace them while I'm here so because I know that they can fail as well I forgot to buy this one so I'm not going to worry about that one today it's a, I think it's a hundred microfarad one uh, I guess maybe maybe it'll never fail or if it does I'll replace it then but uh, I'm going to do all four of these and also while I'm here I'll show you that there's a battery a 3 volt CR something or other. It's probably a CR2032, but I'm not sure. I wouldn't know until I took it out. And uh, if you're wondering, mine has the positive symbol facing out, and uh, that's uh, identified well by the plus on the battery, but also on the little metal tang that holds it in, it has a plus sign stamped in it too. So if you find your printer keeps forgetting its settings when it's unplugged, uh, you want to check that. Okay, uh, anyway, good luck with your video. I hope this uh, saves you from throwing out a perfectly good printer that just came with cheap capacitors. I think uh, that's all I have to report on this one. Good luck. Bye-bye.